Hi guys and welcome to the Sunderland vs Bristol City match preview. So Sunderland go on to take Bristol City at the stage of Milan after a brilliant midweek win on Valentine's Day or Valentine's evening. They did take on QPR and of course won by three goals to nil. I did manage to get out a review for that game. I of course had to be, or at least pretend to be pleased to be in the presence of my girlfriend. Uh, so <laughs> I'm only joking of course if she's watching this. I very much enjoyed myself. Um, but uh, but yeah, so we took on QPR. It was a great win. I think it was a good display. We showed a lot of character. I feel like, despite you know they got themselves a penalty, Patterson with a cracking save. You could argue that was the the turning point of the game. He saved it with his leg. They had spells, but I think ultimately I believe we were the better side against QPR, and we thoroughly deserved the win. And I'm really really buzzing for Jack Clark as well. I know a lot of. Play, sorry, a lot of fans have got on Jack Clark's back, but I've always seen myself, you know, I'm not sitting here as a sort of, I told you so type of attitude with this, but with Clark, I've always said, you know, he can be predictable with his sort of cutting in from left to right, but nine times out of ten, it does work. Yes, he can be frustrating in the in the department of not releasing the ball quick enough, but he's always a threat, regardless of whether it comes off or not, he is always a threat, and I've always seen the value in that. I've never shied away or, you know, just shunned him off because he hasn't had an end product for last you know, however many games, I've always seen it, and you know, people turning on him far too quickly, and I don't think, with the way this club is going at the moment, and the results, and the performance, and the players that we've seen at the moment, I don't think there's any room for us to really dig out players to the extent that some, or at least a selection of fans did with Jack Clark, I think it was highly unfair, so I'm buzzing that he got themselves a couple of goals, and really shown what he's all about, and there were two fantastic goals as well, the first one, you know, he's driving a player, cutting in from left to right, which again, it, sometimes it's predictable, but it comes off, um, and it was just the way the ball just stuck to his feet like glue and managed to just drag it into the bottom right hand corner. And the second one, you know, his movement off the ball was excellent to hold his run and then ping it into the roof of the net. Excellently done again from Jack. So I'm really, really buzzing for him. But Bristol City at the stage of my life is not going to be an easy game whatsoever because they are unbeaten in 10 games since Boxing Day, I do believe. Uh, they've gone 10 games um, without a defeat. And I think they've got five draws in there, to be fair. But still, they're not in the habit of losing games at all, Bristol City. They're a resilient side, although in saying that, they did, of course, uh, get themselves a draw against Wigan last time. And you'd expect Bristol City to beat them. And Wigan looked, they looked really decent. I think under Sean Maloney, they might be able to change things around there. But we'll have to, you know, that remains to be seen. But, you know, they looked a really good side in that second half in Wigan. And Bristol City, not so much. But we know what they're capable of. They're a good, well-drilled, organised side. And it isn't going to be easy at all. But I do believe that Tony Mowbray will ring the changes. Or at least one or two changes. He said in a, in a pre-match interview to this game, he said that it is going to be a couple of changes. We still have the usual suspects out, of course, being Lyndon Gooch, Roscoe, Embleton and the like. Um, you know, Gooch is still another couple of weeks away. But he is expected to chop and change a few players. You know, Misha was left out against QPR purely because he was exhausted. There's players on that pitch you can see were exhausted. And we're really going to have to start rotating a lot. And that's what I'm going to explain a little bit in my preferred 11 for this game. Speaking of which, we will get into my preferred 11 right now. And I'll, of course, give you a little rundown of why I've made certain decisions. So we have Patterson in goal. We have Sirkin replacing Alessi. Now, there's nothing wrong with Alessi's performance at all. But he's been brought off a lot and he's been chopping and changing with Sirkin purely because of course Sirkin is coming back from injury and Alessi over the last few games he's absolutely blown a gasket again nothing to do with his performance can't knock him at all can't fault him uh, Alessi I think he's been absolutely fantastic on the left hand side but there's been times where we're literally getting to the 40th minute and sometimes sort of the early second half and he looks absolutely exhausted and we can't you know, start running plays into the ground. I remember when we did it last season with Callum Doyle, he had an excellent start to the season and then we were using him every single game and he was a, a shadow of himself because we were running into the ground too much. So I just think it would be a nice little break for Alessi. Even if Sirkin comes on and then comes off, I'm sorry, starts Sirkin and then Alessi comes on with sort of 25 minutes to go or something just to keep the ball rolling with it with his... Uh, is um, is playing time, but in the middle we're going for the usual suspects, Bart and Bollard, uh, who've been absolutely outstanding. Complete brick walls at the back, fantastic partnership they've built there, and I, I'm really struggling to see Luke O'Neill get back into that sort of central defensive partnership at the moment. Trey Hume right back as well, absolute unsung hero. He's been outstanding, Trey Hume, and he's another player. I don't see how Lyndon Gooch gets back into the side as a right back anyway, with Trey Hume playing the way he is. He looks like an accomplished defender, getting forward, he's getting better and better. It was only a few weeks ago where I was saying with Trey Hume, yeah, he'll bring the ball forward, but then he, he refused to cross it or, or, or get sort of, of really pushing to that final third. He'll kind of, he'll almost be scared to make that penetrating pass. 
but now he's doing it and he's looking fantastic linking up with the likes of Diallo uh, and Roberts or whoever's on if Pritchard's on as well linking up in the little triangles on that right hand side uh, and he looks absolutely fantastic he's one of the first names on the team sheet for me at the moment now in the middle this is where I really struggle because again I'm kind of predicting on what Tony Roby's going to do as well I think Luke O'Neill deserves to start there although technically I would probably prefer to see or maybe Dan Neal brought back into the side but I think with Luke O'Neill scoring and then eventually putting a great performance against QPR I think he had a shaky 15-20 minutes positionally but I think that's just that's going to come with the territory because of course he's been so used to playing in a defensive role and then he gets thrown into a centre midfield role which I know everyone will say that's his, you know, his natural position but for how many years now have we seen him play across a back four or a back three or a back five and he hasn't got anywhere near a midfield role so you can get a bit out of touch in that in that way so I completely understood that the opening 15-20 minutes were shaky but after that it was excellent he deserves to start for me I will keep Abdullah Bar next to him as well purely because you know after a 3-0 win it's hard, it's difficult to pull players out. I know he did come off anyway, but it, it, for me, it, those, those middle two, it could be anyone. Mishu could come back in. I would like. I was really enjoying watching Daniel and Mishu play together. But again, when you come off the back of a 3-0 win, I, I, I just struggle to start pulling players out. Going forward, I have dropped Pritchard for the moment. I think Diallo, he needed that rest um, on, uh, uh, on the midweek game against QPR. But I think now it's time. We're back at the stage of my life. Clock, Diallo, Roberts, chuck them all on. Our firepower is outstanding in that area. Whether we end up seeing the likes of Burnett or, or Hadji start or come in at some point, that remains to be seen. And Gelhart as well. I mean, he's had a difficult start. He's looked really, really isolated, the lad. And I think we need to try and find a way to get him into the, into the, into the game a bit more. I think he might need to start coming deep a little bit more. I think, you know, Ross Stewart, I've said this before on live streams and previews and reviews with, uh, with Ross Stewart. What he's great at doing is, of course... He has his goal-scoring ability, absolutely, Ross Stewart. But there is games where he can become isolated if we're you know, on the back foot a little bit. But sometimes as a centre-forward or a number nine, you need to bring yourself into the game. Come deep, get involved in the play, even if it means cutting back into your own half. Get involved in the play and dragging us up the pitch. Sometimes you need to do that. You can't just stand flat against their back line and then just expect things to happen for you. He needs that movement and that needs to you know, that needs to be replicated. Um, we, we need to see that a little bit more. He did play a bit better against QPR. He had a really good chance, pretty much one of them on the keeper, but coming away from goal and he slammed it into the side netting. Hopefully he does come good, but in the minute for me, it's looking like he's not really suiting our system. But we, you know, that's only after a couple of games. We'll obviously give him plenty of time and support the lad. So I'm going to keep him there. I think there's something, there's something in... Um, Gelhart that we need to just pull out of him and he'll eventually come good hopefully if not you know we, we've played games before without strikers but we're more than capable of doing it and I don't want to just keep on shoehorning Gelhart in if he keeps shipping in poor performances do you know what I mean so if we had to bring Gelhart off and then you know push Diallo and uh, and Clark up there and bring Pritch in that's that's an option but as of right now I want to give him an opportunity so that is probably a starting level I would go with of course as usual in the comments down below let me know what you would go with as well but now to my score predictions now, I'd love to be able to say that this will be three wins on the bounce but sadly I think it is going to be a draw I think we're going to be looking at a one all draw Bristol City they're not a team to be sniffed at they're a good side coming away from home uh, uh, they're not used to losing as I say unbeaten in 10 and I think it is going to be a one-all draw. But I do think that Gelhart will get his first goal for the club. I think we will take the lead in the first half. They will equalise in the second. And it wouldn't be a terrible point, it, you know, all things considered. Uh, of course, I prefer three wins on the bounce. And the form we're in, you know, it could dictate that we, we should be getting three on the bounce. But again, I think Bristol City, they're a good side. I'm going to be respectful there. And I can see it being a draw. Um, with the win, of course, we could see ourselves going as high as fourth, depending on how Luton do. But I am going to be going for a one all draw here. So that is my predictions. Let me know in the comments down below what you think is going to happen in tomorrow's game. But if you have enjoyed, hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, take care. Stay jammy.